All right, guys and girls. Today we are going live with Candace of uh, Iron Horse, and uh, just kind of a quick background on Candace is you and I have probably known each other since what 2007, 2008. I think 2009. 2009. Yeah, okay, yeah. 2009. Um, we were crossfitting together yeah. at uh, GSX and. Uh, we went on to host some regionals. You went on to some games. Uh, probably that was the 2009 and 10. You guys coached me for 2009 up to 10. So up to 10. Okay. Year, so yeah. with with me uh, from 2009 to 10, and that's kind of when I got into like more of the sort of moving towards the weightlifting stuff. Mm -hmm. You stayed really involved in CrossFit. Went on to do multiple other regionals games. Uh, went on to uh, open your own affiliate, mm -hmm. um, Iron Horse, which was opened up when? Well, technically it was around since 2010, but 2010. it came on as owner in uh, 2012. Okay, 2012 you came on, took on Iron Horse, um, and then now you've grown that to uh, probably one of the largest uh, CrossFit affiliates and communities in, for sure, the DFW area. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine you're probably one of the larger ones across the nation as well and uh, so really you've been involved in CrossFit at a high level as far as being a part of the community, being part of the games, being part of coaching, athlete, all the above. So I thought that you would probably be the perfect person to uh, bring in here and kind of talk about the uh, current CrossFit situation since uh, it seems like everything is just happening this year. Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, uh, CrossFit got hit really hard with uh, some comments that came out, and uh, there's been some responses to that, and I uh, just wanted to get in here and kind of pick your brain on some of that. Sure. Um, is there anything else that you want to know? I know you probably have a, a good CrossFit following. I have mostly weightlifters. Is there anything you want to kind of add to that as far as like who you are and your background, or are you just ready to kind of get into it? No, I think uh, I'll stay real humble and just... <laughs> yeah, yeah, she could. If she wanted to, she could probably get. She could list a very, very long list of what she's accomplished in the in the fitness arena. Um, but we do only have an hour here today, so let's just go ahead and get right into it. Um, so it was a little over a week ago, on Sunday, my news feed just started kind of blowing up um, with uh, some comments that were made, and then some reactions from the CrossFit affiliates. Can you just kind of recap what kind of happened on the CrossFit end um, and just kind of let us know uh, everything that kind of went on because a few things came out more than just tweets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to kind of actually backtrack to what had happened, you know, that's known pretty much worldwide right now with George Floyd and his death. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of the catalyst that sparked this movement that we see and, um, on the CrossFit side, I know myself, including members of the community, whether they're just involved in CrossFit or even affiliate owners, um, we're all just kind of sitting back and waiting for a response from CrossFit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of days went by, there really wasn't much. And um, I know they came out with a small statement, but for a lot of people, it wasn't really seen as, you know, this is really inclusive and we're really trying to be a part of this change. So. Yeah. That was occurring at the same time. Um, I know the, I think it's the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, they had posted, um, you know, that racism is a public health issue and provided some information for that. And Greg Glassman's response was, it's Floyd 19. And um, obviously that ruffled a lot of feathers, including myself. Um, felt that was very dehumanizing. and. Mm -hmm. Extremely inappropriate, especially as a leader of a large platform such as CrossFit. And um, especially since they hadn't said anything leading exactly. up to that, too. So that was a, pretty much the only thing that's been said about it. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't know the, the full story. Yeah, I'm getting all this from social media as well, mm -hmm. or you know, articles that go out, or yeah. podcasts. But um, from my understanding, too, there was some email exchange between Greg, uh, Greg Glassman and also um, formerly Rocket CrossFit, which I think now is Rocket community fitness mm -hmm. and uh, I read over it I saw parts of it it was only like half of the email that was showing but 
um, very inappropriate remarks that were made. Um, you know, and as, as a business owner myself, there's no point in time where I'd ever speak to someone like that in the way he did, and you know, especially to an affiliate who's supporting him. And yeah. I think it was just. It wasn't that specifically or the tweet specifically that really caused the uproar. I think it was just the straw that kind of broke the camel's back because there's been a long list of things that have occurred throughout years of affiliation in mm -hmm. CrossFit where, you know, affiliates aren't being heard and it's just um, extremely inappropriate and terrible timing on top of it all. So Yeah, um, you know, it's always been like a very interesting uh, layout because it, it's kind of had this very big hands-off like approach even almost like from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was like you guys can affiliate and then good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then it really grew from being like a few affiliates to being, I mean, they got something like 13,000 or something like that, right? Yeah, I think it was 15,000 15, before. 15,000 at one point, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe not so much anymore. <laughs> right. Um, so so outside of just your response, like across the board, what was kind of like the affiliates' uh, response to um, those emails, those tweets? Like, what what kind of came out after that? Yeah, I'm not sure where it originally started, but I think it was actually Jason Kalipa of MC Fit who mm -hmm. made the first um, statement saying that he was going to de-affiliate or disaffiliate, and uh, it just kind of started the snowball. And yeah. um, you know, others like Rich Froning and even I think Annie Sakamoto, she's like the original nasty girl, yeah. like big, big names started really speaking up and saying that they were also going to remove um, their involvement with CrossFit as well and um, it just created a huge uproar and I think um, it was one of those things too where as an affiliate owner, like if you didn't say something, you were also a part of the problem. Yeah. You know, it's no longer yeah, yeah. acceptable to be an observer anymore. To take yeah, and that's got to be tough because you've got because you you don't you didn't have anybody speaking for you all as affiliates. Right. So if CrossFit's out there and being proactive on all this, then that kind of falls under the umbrella, mm -hmm. you know. And so y'all also don't have to take on as much because you have like this whole system that you can kind of say we're you know this is how we're supporting because it's trickling down from top down. Right. And uh, but not having that, it's like y'all kind of had to figure all this out on your own. Right. And uh, and I'd imagine that somebody like Jason Khalifa, you know, and some of those top, you know, people who've been involved in a really long time, they're almost more of a voice in CrossFit than I think HQ at this point. Yes, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. So when they say something, um, yeah, it, it probably ended up having a lot of pull and. Uh, do you think it was, do you think their leadership is partly why we probably have also seen a lot of people no longer associating with CrossFit? Yeah, I yeah. think, uh, you know, like I said, this has been something that has been ongoing for many, many years. I've, um, you know, not personally met Greg Glassman before, but I mm -hmm. know of stories have been told, whether they're true or not, um, of things that he has done as a leader and, um, in my opinion, not a good representation of a real leader. Yeah. Um, and even on a personal level, you know, I uh, I didn't experience anything like I'm hearing about, but I did experience something when I um, was going through seminar staff. So I was yeah. trying to get a position on staff, mm -hmm. um, which is multiple internship visits where you go out for a weekend to observe the coaching staff there and to get feedback and get in front of this large audience where they're actually teaching these seminars and you have to travel for all this out of your own pocket and put all these hours into it and finally get the position. I was like super stoked, you know? Yeah. And at the same time, I was also pursuing um, to become a professional athlete for the sport of grip. I think I remember this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I, think I was actually, while well, you were gone sometimes, I think I was in there at your gym covering some of your shifts at that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I remember ago. this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> sorry, go on. But yeah, so um, at the same time, I got on uh, the San Francisco Flyer at the time, which was a team mm -hmm. for GRID, which was up and coming, and um, was excited to go over to San Francisco and start this new journey while still having this new job I was super proud of that I had achieved, and you know, it was a big deal, and um, probably a day later, I get an email from HQ, and they're like, hey, 
We found out you're also doing grid. We don't support that. You need to make a decision. Is it us or them? So that was obviously a bad taste in yeah. my mouth on yeah. a personal to, level. To give you an ultimatum based on you know something you're doing just outside of them completely. Right. Like that's yeah. Right. It's like uh, just a bad taste, and I felt kind of what I've heard other people have experienced about this sense of fear with HQ yeah. that you know it's very cutthroat, and we've even seen it. Yeah. You know, I've seen people like Margot Alvarez and people that I've competed with that were on some of our stuff that got fired out of nowhere and without yeah. warning and just just trying to figure out where all this is coming from, but knowing exactly that it's coming from him. Yeah, I you know I was on the gymnastics um, staff for a while, and uh, you know I didn't I didn't talk too much with HQ, but there was always this sense from um, you know our leaders in the gymnastics uh, staff for CrossFit that. Basically, we're always on walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. At any moment, this could all just decide, hey, we're not doing this anymore, or we're hiring somebody else on. It's it just felt like there was like, you say something, you rub somebody the wrong way, then that's it. Right. Could be up and gone right there. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I think that's. So you're also saying like, basically, it's not just what's happening right now and and I think it's been very clear like I mean we've seen it in CrossFit for a long time they've always kind of been like you know they, they've always kind of gone against the grain and a lot of things that they say and there's been some controversial things about what they do and for the most part uh, I think a lot of affiliates and you can speak on this too um, at the time we're like okay well we're still doing more good than bad and even though I don't really care for what they said or how they responded to this it wasn't like it was a, you know, it didn't have a huge, huge impact in the fitness industry at the time. Um, but now when times are really, really hard right. and things are very, very sensitive, I mean, there's just so much going on right now. Um, you know, you can't, you can't be doing that and then just think that it's going to just go away like it has in the past. Right. Yeah. And I think that's, Partially why even myself as the owner of Iron Horse made the decision to, to disaffiliate because without doing something that dramatic, certainly no change would occur. Mm -hmm. But by showing our power as an affiliate community to be like, hey, this is not what we are in alignment as far as our values. We don't support this. Yeah. We're going to show you just how serious we are. We're going to disaffiliate. That's, that's why we did it. I think that's why so many other people did it too. But now we're kind of in this, a lot of us are in the state of limbo, like, yeah, what absolutely. next? Like, are they going to create change that we're requesting? Mm -hmm. or are we going to see this positive change at all? Like, so we're just kind of sitting back to, to be observers again. So. Yeah, I think that's, but I think that's great. I think they've been able to sometimes, like, skate along and some of the, you know, controversial stuff that they've been doing. And now to really see, I mean, hundreds, probably maybe thousands of affiliates step up and say, hey, you know, we've been representing y'all for a long time. Y'all have not been representing us. Right. And, I mean, even something as small, I mean, you could see it as big, but something as small as, you know, going from their marketing strategy of constantly, it's forging elite fitness. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like, pulling the rug out from under us and like, hey, we're not going to let you guys know as <laughs> affiliates, but now we're steering this the other direction. Now we're going to go for health and wellness. And... Yeah. yeah, at the time, that was terrifying. I was like, what? what? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, you completely rebranded when you've got all these affiliates under you and no conversation about this rebranding. Right, until after the fact. So it's yeah. like, well, now looking back, it was the right move. It's more in alignment with what I believe in, yeah. personally. As yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Not, not saying that that was a bad thing that they did. But there was no communication <laughs> yeah. from the top down at all yeah. until after the fact, yeah. Yeah. At least that I am aware of. <laughs> so. Well, you being an affiliate, you should have been aware of. So <laughs> right. imagine if you're not aware of it, many others were not either. Exactly. exactly. And then wasn't there a time too where they had gotten, um, where they completely went off of social media as well? Yes, that was also part of it. Yeah. Um, I think there was, or maybe it was a little bit after, but I know there was something that had occurred with Facebook that they didn't agree with. Um, so like as a power trip, they just decided to remove to, to voice their opinion, kind of ironic how that panned out, <laughs> how, how we're seeing that now yeah, on the other yeah. end, but, but, um, but then they slowly came back. But for us as affiliates, it's like, holy crap, like we've had all this marketing being done for us as a business with the brand name, 
that now they're just taking away. So now people from the outside looking yeah. in at CrossFit like have nothing to really look at except what was past history. Yeah, and essentially that was because y'all weren't, I mean, y'all aren't getting programming from HQ. You're not getting, you know, uh, business, you know, advisory from HQ. You're not getting any of that. So really, essentially what the affiliate was, was the marketing side of it. Mm -hmm. So you get to label CrossFit, you get to use CrossFit and all the above. And then when all of a sudden their huge platform is just gone, right. yeah, that's tough. You're like, right. you know, CrossFit isn't out there as much and getting out there and then that affects y'all directly as a business. Well, even now, like, you know, you were disaffiliated and, you know, our walls still say CrossFit Iron Horse. Mm -hmm. We've changed the name on our social media platform to Iron Horse Community Fitness, just waiting in limbo to see what happens, right? Yeah. So now we have these conversations where people come in that are brand new and it's like, well, what the hell are we? Yeah, what are you? Yeah, yeah that's, that's tough. And How so do if things don't happen soon, y'all are just in this weird part. It's like, how do, we, how do you now market your gym? Exactly. So yeah. that's the... That's the other flip side of it is like, you know, if you continue to not be a part of the brand, if that's the decision that we go, like, how do we communicate to people on the outside looking in, like, what specifically we are and how we can help them yeah. without this brand name that's been ingrained in so many people's brains for, I don't know, 12 years, 15 years? Not for sure. I mean, to 20? I don't even know what the count is. I mean, I, I'd imagine that a majority of people, like, first seeking out CrossFit, it's because they hear about CrossFit. Exactly. And then they look for a CrossFit affiliate nearby, and then they walk into your gym. Yeah, exactly. But then, uh, you know, if they're seeking out CrossFit, but you can't have it on your website, you can't have it on their site or anything like that, but essentially that's what you're doing, like, how do you still reach those people? Right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. tough. And yeah. we just got done with the rebrand. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I know, so, I know, so, right? Yeah, we, yeah, so you just kind of went through this, right. this big process. Right. We, uh... Which I love, by the way. I mean, it's super clean. Like, it was super exciting to see, like, y'all's gym, like, kind of, uh, you know, being redone. Um, you know, that's a, a gym that we were in so long ago, and we've seen it change so many times. And to see it kind of really change into something for you was really cool. Yeah. Um, Weird times, though. So, <clears throat> so that being said, so now all this is happening, um, HQ's... How is HQ responding? I've seen a little bit of information trickling out there, but again, I'm not really all that plugged in. What has has HQ done anything, and what have they done? Yeah, from my understanding, it's um, Greg, Greg Glassman has decided to retire, which you know still has rubbed a lot of people wrong because you know, yeah. you're still getting a financial stake in this, you know, and decision making. From my understanding, but. Now I know that Dave Castro, who is the director of the CrossFit Games, he's mm -hmm. stepped in as the CEO. Uh, I'm not quite show, sure what the dynamics of there are, and I think a lot of people are waiting to see, but um, there has been some apologizing. Um, some people obviously don't feel like it's enough, it's a little too late. Um, it's, it's a step at least in the right direction. I don't know if that's so enough. So the apology that I saw, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, was labeled from HQ. Yes, yeah, so I believe so, and then yeah, Castro. Yeah, so I haven't seen anything from Glassman specifically. No. Yeah. Um, I think there was. <laughs> was there? Okay. Um, but I want to say it was short, sweet, and very um, half-hearted. Yeah. I would, I would say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, has Castro made any announcements? Yeah, and he's, uh, in my opinion, he's speaking like a leader. I mean, I know that guy's got a background with leadership with, uh, I believe he was a Navy SEAL, mm -hmm. um, and coming from a military background, I know that there's a lot that goes into that, um, at least on the Marine Corps side. So for me, that's something that's hopeful. Um, I feel like he will at least be a step in the right direction, but, you know, there's so much trust that's been broken. There's so much betrayal. There's so many hard feelings. You know, even if he gets the opportunity to lead, you know, and steer the ship, like how long is it going to take for us to, to trust again? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. It could take years, you know. Yeah. And as a business owner, if we were to keep the brand, like, is it worth the risk? Yeah, yeah. What do, you, what do you do during those years? Right, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I don't know. <laughs> but I do know that they've started a, I think it was as of yesterday, um, now they're trying to push for um, affiliate representatives so That's they awesome. have different regions. I know that, like NorCal, for example, a uh, good buddy of mine, he's actually an old coach for Grid, or he was involved with it. Um, he's going to be a part of the NorCal region, cool. Craig Howard. 
I'm not sure I know him. Yeah, he's he's pretty well known for uh, Diablo Cross in San Francisco. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I know that they're taking that up. So they're reaching out to the community to see who can step up and and be a a way to kind of transfer information in and out and provide feedback. Now these reps, are they affiliate owners? Are they coaches? Like th- where are they coming from? Yeah, I think yeah. they're affiliate owners, but they're going to speak for their regions of okay. all affiliate owners in that region. Cool. So that's good. Um, I'm curious to see how well that functions Yeah, like and if it's enough. Will they have, even though they're going to have a say, is yeah. that say going to be listened to? And is that... And is that going to be a diverse group of people? I think, hmm. you know, the big thing, too, is I was on a, an affiliate panel call and listened in. I think over 3,000 affiliates were a part of this. And um, they had people on the panel to include Rich Froney and Annie Sakamoto, um, Pat Shearer. Well, there's a bunch of people that are on this. And from my understanding, it was coming from Dave Castro who wanted to hear what okay. we all want. Right. Yeah. And things that were talked about was obviously we don't want to pay Glassman anymore. Let him gone completely. Yeah. I think that was the, the biggest. Yeah, yeah, for thing. sure. Because even if they do completely rebrand and it turns into something really, really good, I mean, essentially you're still filling Greg Glassman's pockets. Exactly. And <laughs> Cause it, yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah. That's t- that's tough. Right. Yeah, that's tough. But the the second one that was a uh, big uh, agreement was that we all want a board of directors of some kind that's diverse. Mm-hmm. So different races, religions, socioeconomic backgrounds, um, sexual orientation, age brackets. Like it's great, yeah. So I'm curious to see if this affiliate represent or representative type thing even um, goes that direction, or if it still stays. Yeah very one-sided you know if we have and i hate to talk about race but you know if it's all white men or all white people in general it's yeah. probably not going to rub people right that are yeah, in yeah. minority groups absolutely you know? yeah you're still not getting you know you're not getting all the information exactly yeah so we'll see what happens but i'm curious to see i know it's going to take time and i from my own personal experience anytime there's any type of legal change in a business of any kind, it takes a long, yeah. long time. Um, but I feel like this should be something that should be very quick because of what's occurring. It does seem like there's like a few things that could be done very quickly and very easily because there are things that probably should have been done a long time ago. Exactly. Like obviously a diverse affiliate representation, like like why not? Right. Um, now it would be nice to probably hear how much say those affiliates actually or those reps actually have. Right, like a checks and balance system. Yeah, absolutely. That's something that was also discussed on the panel is, you know, even if even if we have these board of directors, if you know Glassman has a hundred percent say in it all, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is he gonna if listen? If ninety nine percent of them want to say want to move in this direction or do this, but still the the say comes down to one person. Exactly. So. Yeah. I think that was the um, general consensus is that we want to be heard and have not just a voice but some type of um, ability to put in our feedback and have it mm-hmm. create positive change in the right direction. Otherwise, we're all spinning our wheels for no reason. Yeah. So, um, was there any conversation in like uh, any kind of like outreach programs, like setting up maybe an affiliate in some of these low income areas? Did it, anything like that? I don't that know that that was up? discussed. Yeah. I just know that um, the people that are on the panel, they were they came from all different backgrounds, different races, and stuff like that. That's good. And uh, I think everybody just wants to see, and even in my own local fi- affiliate, like people just want their affiliates to be a safe place for everybody. And hmm. And talking to people that are minorities in my community, um, you know, they they just don't feel like they can walk into any CrossFit gym and, and be a part of the group all the time because, yeah. you know, it's just like if you buy a car, right? You buy a car and you're like, oh, it's brand new and I got the only one. You get down the road and you're like, holy shit, everybody has my car, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, the same is true if you look around in a CrossFit yeah. space for most places. I didn't realize it until it was brought to my attention. I was like, you know, everybody for the most part is white. Yeah. And, you know, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But I know that I have been a minority. I am currently mm-hmm. is, um, you know, my sexual orientation, which is not a race business for the record. But, you know, I'll share that. Yeah. And, um, you know, even growing up, I grew up in a school um, where I was a minority. I was one of the only white girls, and it was predominantly black. And 
Um, I had a lot of my best friends were all black and loved it, but Plus a female I still in the felt military. out of place and in the military. Yeah, yeah. And even yeah. especially in the military. Yeah, and I a imagine woman that's in the probably. Military. Yeah. yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, so you've been a little bit on that receiving end. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, now I can't speak for people in the black community at all, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I can. I'll never understand that. My heart goes out to everybody that's suffering. I can't imagine what they're going through right now with everything in the world, but. You know, I, I have some idea as to how that probably feels, and I don't want anybody to walk into my space and feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I want it to be a safe place. I want everybody to be able to come on in and feel comfortable and welcome. Um, and I think that's just the general thought process of all affiliate owners right now. Is yeah. They just want it to be inclusive for all. Yeah, and then when you have a CEO saying things that are very um, dividing, it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's really tough to sit back and be like, I'm comfortable staying, you know, with this. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, what what kind of actions have you taken so far? Um, what are your plans? You did kind of mention you're a little bit in limbo, so I'm sure you don't have any long-term yeah. plans right now because you got to kind of sit and see what's going on. But what, what kind of actions have you already kind of taken and responded to? Yeah, so I think... Uh, for us, obviously, disaffiliating. I sent mm -hmm. in an email. Now, we are paid up through November, so I actually communicated that um, on Monday to my members. We took the weekend to think about some things, but um, let them know that, hey, like we haven't made a final decision in this. We're, we're in limbo. Our hope is that things go in the right direction, and we are paid up through November, so we just came out and rebrand. Yeah. We're gonna wait to change our signage and paint walls and all that until we know for certain what direction yeah, we're Yeah, I guess that's good that you have a little bit of a window there yeah. to kind of see how things move. Right. Yeah. But you know, we uh, we took a step in the right direction in my opinion in that this past Saturday we um, had a George Floyd Memorial work workout, which was cool. not just for him, but to recognize everybody who's lost their lives, you know, from Breonna Taylor to um, Amon Arbery, um, all these people that had died innocently that shouldn't have, mm -hmm. and um, we donated funds. Uh, we started a, a charity fund this uh, year when I took over ownership uh, for Iron Horse oh, specifically, cool. where I want to devote some funds personally from the actual business itself. Mm -hmm. um, so those are going to go to uh, the George Floyd Memorial Fund as well as the NWACP. Um, LDF funds so at least we can do something in the right direction and then um, also speaking with minority groups within our community specifically like you know how can we help even more um, there's a member in particular in my gym who's awesome he's always um, I'll, I'll give a shout out Luke Witt mm -hmm. Luke Wittenbrick yeah, yeah. he's an yeah, awesome Luke. dude yeah, yeah. Um, he's time. we're doing good okay he's working yeah. with uh, people in the local community and uh, like Como Elementary um, yeah, I think I saw some of that. It was really cool stuff. Yeah, really cool so stuff. Yeah. from our understanding from COVID, um, a lot of those kiddos aren't eating a whole lot of meals right now. So, um, you know, putting funds towards that, creating awareness of things that are going on that my, even myself as a, I would say, a very privileged individual in my upbringing, fortunately, you yeah. know, unlike a lot of people, um, just being more aware of those things and trying to put more effort into um, not just doing events for that, but just, you know, trying to actually create positive change and, and be the change that we wish to see in the world instead of just observing and yeah, just sitting yeah. back and waiting for other people to I, I like what you just said, too, like, don't just do events for that because um, that's a little bit of a pet peeve for mine. For me is when people just host something and it's almost like piggybacking what's going on, like make make some efforts to make some change and reach out and stuff like that. So um, as so talking to maybe other affiliates or even weightlifting clubs and stuff like that, um, what do you, so how have you been able to reach out into the community? Like, like how did y'all get plugged in with being able to go out to Como, um, you know, speaking and communicating with these other minority groups and then, um, yeah, speak on that a little bit. Like, what would you recommend, maybe? Oh, um, you know, talk. You know, yeah. I think just like a relationship with anybody, whether it's marriage or it's a friendship or it's leading a community of individuals, like, you have to have a transparent and very open-door policy to, you know, give people an opportunity to have those conversations without fear, which is what we see at HQ, right? And yeah. I think... 
that is the biggest um, thing that I've learned as a businesswoman is like feedback is one of the best things that can happen, whether it's good or bad. And I think the same is true with just having those conversations that are hard and uncomfortable with members that are directly in, impacted by it in your community yeah. and um, getting out more. We just started this. You know, I'm not going to say that we've been yeah, doing a yeah, whole yeah. bunch. Um, we're just starting it. And, uh, you know, my hope is that it becomes something that we do every quarter and, and hopefully every month. And, you know, it's like anything else, you got to kind of baby step into it to find yeah, a rhythm. Yeah. Um, but the first step is starting. Yeah, and educating cool. yourself. So I think if people just start there and, and you know, talk to people that are impacted directly and just uh, without bombarding them because it is exhausting on their part from what I understand, but, um, you know, just take action. It's, like I said, it's not enough to be an observer anymore. You mm -hmm. have to do your part by leading by example and by, um, you know, doing what you know you're supposed to do. Yeah. You know, and actually yeah, for sure. It. Yeah. yeah, especially when you have a platform and a community that does uh, listen and, I mean, as coaches and gym owners, I mean, we're already guiding people in some way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you're right to not be able to, you know, to have that platform and not use it uh, just as HQ had this platform and didn't use it. I think that's, uh, you know... That's not helpful. Right. You know, it's it's moving in the wrong direction. Right. You're right. Um, that's really cool that y'all are doing that and y'all are starting that. Um, we'll, I think we should chat a little bit more afterwards and see if we can uh, combine on something. That'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I love it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, let's sidetrack a little bit. So COVID shut everything down. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Um, and uh, Texas wasn't terrible in the fact that we were only close for maybe about two months. And, uh, and we're able to start kind of reopening. Um, so how, has, how have y'all kind of been able to get back into the gym? And what changes have y'all made um, just kind of post-COVID? And do you think there's anything that is going to end up being like a forever change because of all this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really curious. I think, uh, well, first of all, you know, I feel very fortunate that we have a freaking badass community. Yeah. You know, they've been nothing but supportive and, you know, we made it out alive and I know that there's a lot of businesses that haven't mm -hmm. and there's a lot of businesses that won't and I feel confident that we will because we have such a great support system at Iron Horse. Um, but you know, when this all happened, it was like, holy crap, like, what do we do? Right? Yeah, for sure. But, um, fortunately I've been working on a virtual platform like yourself, I'm sure still, yeah. um, for quite a few years and, uh, basically transitioned all our members into a, you know, virtual training. And, um, of course that was welcomed. And then some people were like, I hate this. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. get it. I've been there too. Yeah. Um, but I think that we just were uh, making it a really good effort to show them that every week we're trying to improve on something with those content, mm -hmm. whether it was just you know being a little bit more vocal about their needs and like like trying to make those adjustments on their programs from videos to um, you know just writing an in, in intended stimulus you know something as small yeah. as that and like yeah. um, giving video feedback and then as we transition in like promising things and delivering like this is what's going to happen when we open our doors you know. Um, we're fortunate as much as it wasn't something I was really happy about in the beginning to have um, a huge facility mm -hmm. you, know, and the, you know looking back it was a really big headache yeah, you know, definitely. very expensive and it's um, a lot to clean <laughs> lots of clean fortunately we hired people for that yeah good um, <laughs> but um, now it's a blessing so yeah, yeah. now we have you know these huge six by 11 sections with eight feet between them with coaching lanes for us to walk down as coaches so that they have their own area, their equipment's pre-staged. Uh, we are wearing masks as the staff and gloves, which mm. is really challenging. We're looking at little like headsets and all that, which yeah. I'm a dinosaur, I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but just showing them that we're taking this seriously because I know yeah. there's people that don't care that, you know, think it's, you know, it's just like the flu and I get it. Um, but there are people, and we've sent out surveys that are very concerned yeah. about not just themselves, but their loved ones, and you know, are they going to bring it home to their nephews, their nieces, their their children, their yeah. uh, significant other, their grandparents? You know, and 
just showing that we're putting forth that effort that even if you know everybody's lax so day, days ago about it like we're taking this seriously because we want to show them that like we do care about you guys yeah and you kind of have to and, and you kind of need to show that you care for everybody and in doing so taking like over the top measures is you're you're also catering to the people who are most fearful of it exactly you know and and that's what you need to do because it's it's not going to negatively affect, as much as people might complain about it, it's not going to negatively affect the person that doesn't really mind. Exactly. But it can negatively affect the people that are really worried about it. Yeah. Um, well, even as a business owner, Yeah. I don't want an outbreak. Yeah, absolutely. That the last be, thing you want I would is feel terrible, in first of all, yeah. but like, I would be trying to figure out, like, I'm an overthinker, I'd be like, what did we do wrong? Like, what yeah. did, And it might have even been that it was the gym specifically where it occurred, because we can't really pinpoint, we can do tracing now, but like who all's gonna Yeah, you get still don't really tested. know, and then it's like, okay, who all were you in contact with? Exactly. And then you gotta go through your gym members, and yeah, absolutely, you have to try to, you know, keep that as controlled as possible as a gym owner, too. Um, it was interesting, because I sent out a survey to our athletes um, prior to coming back in, and they're, there were less people concerned about getting it, but there are a lot more. It was like something like 25% of people were worried about catching it. But then it was like 75% of people are worried about passing it to somebody yeah. else. And so there's also like not only the fear of like somebody getting it, but like you said, if they get it, are they going to go home and spread it to their grandmother, to their kids, to their other friends and stuff like that? So that ended up kind of being like the bigger fear coming back was want to make sure that we're not we're not the ones spreading it right you know do what we can you know and that's kind of why we because we didn't open up i think it was may 18th when we got the all clear yeah we waited two weeks yeah. so we opened up june 1st and i had some pushback on that of course um but my thoughts were like if, if people are asymptomatic for two weeks i don't want to be a part of that mm -hmm. wave i want yeah, to see yeah. what happens after that wave kind of like passes and settles and um I think a lot of people are seeing that now that we are seeing this huge spike yeah. from protesting and from people just getting more, you know, just relaxed. In general, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And uh, and even myself, like sometimes you know, I go out and I forget, and I'm like, holy crap, like I gotta, you know, yeah. keep my mask on. And why is this waitress right it's next to me with her mask barely on? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the little the other night. <laughs> I know. I was telling somebody the other day is like, I don't want to be the asshole that has to say back up. I'm like, just don't talk so close to me. Right. That happened to me the other day. Like, somebody was, like, right here talking to me, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they were like, what? I was like, you got, give me some distance. I was like, but then I feel like the bad person because I had to be the one that's saying, back up, stay away. I was like, just mind your own distance, everybody. So that way it doesn't put everybody else, because some people also just aren't confrontational. Right. And they're not going to say anything if somebody's right there talking in your face or the waitress has the mask hanging out. <laughs> <Right. laughs> So like, like so if everybody were just uncomfortable to, <laughs> distance in general. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. People were just to kind of be mindful of everybody. Um, because again, I get it, some people aren't worried about it. Some people don't take it as seriously, but you know, if you see somebody out there wearing a mask, covering their groceries, just you know, stand a little bit away from them, yeah. you know. And uh and absolutely in, in the gym though, like We've been able to really control. The thing that I've had to keep reminding my clients, though, is like, hey, you got to stop with the fist bumps. You got to stop with the, you know, like, you can't, you can't, you know, high five and, you know, in between stuff. And I was like, sorry, you know, it's just part of it. And so, because keeping spread out is no big deal. Training, you know, in their individual areas and then cleaning the equipment before the next group comes in. But trying to also control their social interaction, especially when some people don't think that it's a big deal. Well, especially so, when people are coming off of a long break of not having any yeah, social not interaction. Yeah, not socializing. All they yeah. want to do is converse. I know, and then people just have this, you know, they just want to interact. They want that contact, which I totally understand. Yeah, because we all want you know, connection. Like, I hesitate all the time, like, you know, I can't do that. Or the, the handshake or, you know, even like you and me, like, seeing each other. I mean, we haven't, you know, a couple years. we've talked, but we haven't, like, been actually face-to-face -face in a while and not like come up to you and give you a hug like it's like you have to kind of guard that mm -hmm. and uh but now i also find myself like cringing when i see it happen you know i can't watch a movie now and I know, see I'm people like, 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 like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's it's weird and so it makes me wonder though you know how how things are going to change from here on out 
even for gyms. I do think that there's probably going to be some positive changes to this, um, even if it's, you know, I would already say it's a very serious thing, but even if it's not as serious as some people think it is, um, I think it's good that people maybe long term might be more conscious of, all right, if I'm sick, I'm going to not go to the gym. Or uh, if I go out and I'm, you know, sick, I'm going to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, now people are probably in a better habit of cleaning their equipment or cleaning their own gym and stuff like that. So at least I think that there could be some, like, long-term positive changes to this that could also help not spread the common cold, the flu, you know, anything like that, too. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts personally, and uh, the, from what I gather, a lot of people think it's never going to go back to normal. And... You know, I think that change is always going to happen, um, but it's a matter of, you know, whether or not we're going to have positive progress from this. You know, I know as, um, you know, the owner of Iron Horse, I see a lot of great things that have come from it. Like, yeah. from, yeah. you know, having to constantly clean the gym, which is a pain, you know, become professional cleaners too. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's something that is very much respected and appreciated by our members mm -hmm. it's been vocalized you know yeah. like that we're taking those extra precautions but they just feel safer and they feel you know more confident that we're trying to do what we can to to make it feel like they're home away from home mm -hmm. as safe as possible but you know who doesn't like the smell of like cleaning product all day long <laughs> you know it's, I feel like I have this, I feel like I have this mild headache 24 <laughs> 7 now just from smelling disinfectant all day <laughs> I was kidding. I don't really care for this all yeah, day. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's just, it's good for business practice. But when you walk like into a gym and it smells that way, I think that's reassuring. Exactly. You know, it's like if you've just had your house cleaned, you walk in and you're like, you can smell the cleaning products. You're like, I know that this is clean. Right. You know, as an owner and you're there, you know, eight hours a day though, you're kind of like, man, can't wait to go home. can get over this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And my hands are so dry all the time. <laughs> see, mine are always really soggy from the gloves. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah see, I'm just, I've just been hitting the hand sanitizer way too much. That's, <laughs> that too. that's me. Um, yeah, so I, I do think there's been some positive things. I learned a lot during the time where, um, where we weren't in the gym too, um, yeah. you know, learning that some people did better, like actually communicating like over text or over email than they did face to face. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, uh, I don't like, you know, I'm not very good at my cell phone. You probably noticed I probably went a couple hours before replying back <laughs> to you about things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I've always been just as a coach, like, somebody might send me something like I'm gonna see them in the gym tomorrow I'll just talk to them about it you know and then every day I just do that. every time somebody walks up hey how are you doing how are you feeling you know just kind of the, the normal check-ins and then try to get the update before they start training and I found out very quickly especially during the quarantine that there's a group of athletes that don't like to talk face to face that don't like to communicate that way and won't tell me that something's wrong to my face but then all of a sudden I was doing like these weekly check-ins just via text and I get just this huge long thread of all this stuff going on. I'm like, whoa, it's like I never would have known this except for now I know that you just communicate differently. So it was interesting to see how, you know, people adjusted and responded to, um, you know, even the time that we were out of the gym. Yeah, and I would, I would even say that. What I observed was that there are some people that really struggle to be self-sufficient. Mm, yeah. You know, like yeah. really having to give them all that accountability and encouragement to continue going on their own and how important the community aspect of CrossFit, for example, is for them in our community. Um, and then you get people that just really just, you know, thrived. Yeah, it they is. They continue doing what they're yeah. supposed to do. And, and ultimately, for Iron Horse, that's what we want our members to learn is... You know, you don't need to depend on a coach all the time. Mm -hmm. You come here because you want to do it with other people because you love it. Yeah, you know? yeah absolutely. But we know that you, when you walk away, you know how to take care of yourself on your own. You yeah, know? absolutely. Like giving them, giving them the tools and information to where they can be self-sustaining, you know, especially with something like this that nobody expected. And so when, when all of your, if everything you leaned on was just being there and next to your, your coach and asking them questions 24-7, and then all of a sudden this happened, I mean, that's a big turn in like how you're motivated but to learn that you can still communicate and you're learning these tools and you can also do that but I think you're right like 
I mean, everybody was fine kind of like that first two, three weeks. And then you could really see people like itching to like get back in the gym. And I think it showed like how important it also is to have that community dynamic. Exactly. Like it's not just a workout. It's not just a fitness program. It's not just snatch and clean and jerk. Like it's also being around your friends, your family, your community, like, that's such a huge part of it, and, you know, I would go to even say that, like, uh, you know, a bigger part of clubs and, if, you know, affiliates or uh, gyms in general is the community side of it. Exactly. And then, like, almost like the fitness and the exercise is secondary to that. Well, even still, like, you think about, you know, if we're talking about games athletes, right, there's mm -hmm. a reason that Matt Fraser trains with Tia Claire to me. There's a reason yeah. that all these athletes get together yeah. and train together because they're going to hold each other accountable. They're going to push each other to be better. And I think the same is true with the community aspect of a gym because you can do it alone, but you and I both know you work out alone. It's not the same intensity. Yeah. It's not the same effort all the time. Yeah. There are days where you do have that, but you know, it just helps to have those like-minded individuals to support you, especially when you have those bad days, which we all go through. And just help you get on your feet if you fall off and you know, yeah. just keep on going. Yeah, there's something about just the energy of like somebody else being around. Right. Like, uh, I mean, you probably know it just as much as anybody, but even as like a, a gym owner, like usually when we work out, it's got to be during times where people aren't around and classes aren't going on and stuff like that. And, and I, worked, I worked out more during the quarantine than I did when I had a gym going on <laughs> because... I wasn't at the gym all the time. You know, there's always something I can do at the gym. And I had Robin to work out with every day. Her schedule stayed the same. And so she was like, you know, I get home at five o'clock, we're gonna work out, we're gonna have dinner. And so then I was like, this is perfect, you know? So I had my training partner every single day, even though we were doing slightly different things and all the above, it's just like having somebody else there, like made it so easy for me to train, you know, multiple times a week as opposed to like, you know, just having to go into your own garage by yourself. And I think very, to me, I say very few people can really do that and really do that very effectively. Right. But I think it all goes down to like, depending on where they were, like, did they lose their job? Did they have their job? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you are working remotely, like if you sit your own hours, like what does that look like? I think a lot of people realize that they do thrive on routine. Yeah. And, you know, me too. Like I would get done with work at like six PM and like I'm like a cup. Six thirty I'm working out. Yeah. And it what's funny is it still aligns with what my schedule is now. Yeah, I get to yeah, work yeah, and coach and I'll good. hop over the six thirty class or seven PM class now. Yeah. Um I think it's important for people to recognize that about themselves too because yeah. um, you know, if you're one of those ones that just used this time, you didn't have a job or you know, are unfortunate and um, you just sat around like you could have been doing really good things for yourself during that time that you missed out on and um, you know, you have people that took total advantage of it and saw mm -hmm. it as an opportunity. Yeah, there was definitely a, 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 a huge divide. You saw some that just, like, fell apart. They just started eating comfort food and drinking right. more often, and the, they stopped working out. They just let all that drop off, and then it's just been, like, this painful coming back process, or they're still trying to get back. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I have a couple people that just haven't even quite made it back to the gym yet, Same. you know? And, uh, but then those that were like, okay, I'm still gonna do my work from this time to this time, I'm gonna work out at this time, I'm gonna join, you know, the, the Zoom training at this time. Those that did that, I mean, transitioned right back in the gym like it was nothing. Right. You know? Well, then you still have people that were you know, trying to stay on it. So we had, when we did our virtual platform, we're still doing that now for anybody that's kind of like concerned about coming back. Is, that's cool. You know, we have a body weight track, a dumbbell track, and then we had a garage gym track, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the people that were on the body weight track, you know, they don't pull up bars. You know, we had them doing bed sheet rows. Yeah. And hook them yeah, up. yeah. I saw it on Instagram somewhere, you know, and like, you know, coming back, like, yeah, they were committed, but they're still having to come back to where they were, and I know that's yeah. very challenging for people, and I've been there too, where it's just like, it's disheartening, you know, yeah. how much you've regressed, and how much you got to get back into it, and establish that routine again, but, you know, kind of ride out the, the shitty part too. Yeah, you know? for sure, um, I was talking to somebody else about that, just like, coming back, because there are some people that almost took a two-month break, and to just, like you said, it's almost more important just to trying to get back into it, just get back into a routine. Mm -hmm. Don't even worry about the workouts that much. Don't worry about the weights that much. 
just first be like, okay, I'm going to get back to my normal three, four day a week of training. These are the hours I'm going to do and just start doing it. Show up. Yeah, just show up. Just yeah. show up because it's only going to really suck for a couple weeks, you know. Mm-hmm. It comes back a lot quicker if you get back in that routine. But if you show up and then you go all out and then you're beat up, you take the next four or five days off and then you do it again, like, you don't want to go through that process. Right. Just keep coming back in. Keep right. coming back in. I think even that too, like, you know, as business owners and coaches, like, trying to program yeah. the workouts to bring them yeah, back yeah. in slowly, like, that's even a challenge because you got so many people on different levels and how do you challenge the people that were on the garage gym track that were, you know, getting after it with all their equipment? How yeah. do you get people that only did the body weight or nothing and, you know, bring them up to pull-ups again, you know? Yeah, like, for sure. Gotta, yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a tough thing to figure out because I had people that did lift the entire time. And so now I've got, like, this huge range of, like, percentages of people coming back where some are in, like, this building back up at 70%. Others are hitting, like, 90% <laughs> right now. Yeah. And I imagine, yeah, it's it's got to be, like, the same thing um, where you have some people who might have only been doing, like, endurance stuff the whole time and now they're back to... You know they've got all their kettlebells, dumbbells, barbells, and pull-up rig again. Yeah. And yeah, how do you, how do you? I mean, how have you been able to kind of like manage that wave of people coming back? Well, we we've always done um, a couple different programming tracks cool. so on our daily workout of the day. So we do a Mustangs, the Colts, and the Stallions. And essentially, yes. Mustangs are like the wild ones. Like they have no idea what they're doing. Right? They're coming out of our mentorship program or an on-ramp. And uh, that's like the beginner level. Okay, cool. They bump it to Coles, that's more intermediate, and then Stallions are those that have been around a while and more advanced. So nice. We have those still there for them. Um, so we still program our, our Stallions as if, you know, they're garage gym goers, so they yeah. still get challenged. You know, Dumbbell Group is more so like our class now. And then the, the body weight track, they're moving into the, the Mustangs, and, you know, we're trying cool. to make sure that the volume's controlled. They're not doing that many reps. Yeah, that's We haven't good. done any kipping pull-ups yet. We're all doing tempo, lots of tempo, which people love and people hate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people yeah. that hate it so much because they think it's boring, but, you know, ultimately we're just but trying to communicate. But it's, it's safe so good and effective. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. So. Um, and that's, y'all do, like, those three levels, like, year round too. Yes. So even if somebody's like interested in getting into like y'all's gym and getting into CrossFit or Iron Horse, then they know that they can start out at a very manageable level. Yeah. And, and so those are just recommendations, right? Yeah. Our, we're big on, you know, just because the whiteboard says something doesn't mean you can't deviate. And we're really big mm-hmm. on like, you know, if you have individual needs, which everybody does, like let's make it individual for you every day. You know, yeah. just have those conversations. Like is your you know, body kind of messed up today, well, let's, you know, instead of doing thrusters, let's, like, hop on the row or something instead. Yeah, and that's, that's okay, and that's part of the culture there. And I think um, if other gym owners can recognize that, they're going to see a lot of success with that like we have. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There's such a, you know, there, there's such a difference between gym to gym. You know, I've always talked about that, and it's so important to go around and see. Don't don't judge a, a CrossFit gym based off of, like, one experience at one place. Because exactly. some people are just going to throw that you know, work out up on the whiteboard and say, you know, go with no direction. And then you got people like you that are doing on ramp that are individualizing it, you know, based off of feedback from people that have this progressive program and stuff. And that's such a huge difference than what you might get somewhere else. Right. So that's cool that y'all are doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, Instagram's probably going to kick us off in about a couple minutes. Um, what else you got going on? Anything coming up in the near future? Funny you ask that. Um, I'm actually going to do my own podcast. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to call it the Forever Resilient Podcast. Nice. So it's going to more so start with like my own personal experiences, um, but kind of just be a platform for people to discuss how they've overcome adversity and you know staying mentally tough and how do you manage stuff in life because everybody goes through hardship. Mm-hmm. I've gone through a lot of hardship the past couple of years, and I feel like this is an opportunity to use that to help other people and create an impact. Very cool. So, kind of your story, and then getting other people's stories. Yeah, that'll be that'll be awesome. Yeah. Looking forward to that. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, outside of that, um, Jim's back and running. Back and running. We got a condensed schedule, so it's not uh, okay. normal. We have forty-five minute classes with thirty-minute blocks between for cleaning. Cool. Um, but we're looking to add some uh, virtual programs. So we have our 
a workhorse track, which will be like a competitive track that aligns with our current class structure. And nice. then we have a um, uh, show horse track, which will be more like physique based. There you go. That type of thing. So yeah. We'll start introducing those next month. Yeah, I don't care what people say. If you think that aesthetics is not motivating, it totally is. <laughs> it absolutely it is. totally is. <laughs> um, and then uh, outside of that, where can people find more information on you? And then when you do start up your podcast and all that kind of stuff, what's the best way to reach out to you and your gym? Yeah, I mean, you guys can uh, email us at info at crossfitironhorse.com. Um, you know, follow us at Iron Horse Community Fitness right now on our Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, if you're trying to reach me directly, go to my in, or my individual in this Instagram, which is Candice underscore Wagner 21, I think. That's right. I'll put it in the show notes. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just, you know, having those conversations and letting me, you know, be a listening ear so that I can redirect you out. Or, cool. So, yeah. Thanks for coming by and chatting. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Later, guys.